Teak, what's up, dude? I'm good, man. You got yeah. excited about Joe D. Had Joe the best Dave. draft in the entire NFL this past uh, weekend going into last week. Yep. Just, the Jets crushed it. You said no other way to look at it. But mm-hmm. and we start, BT, with these Yankees, who we were so wrong about. I guess everybody was wrong about the Yankees. Cashman didn't do enough in the offseason. There's not enough talent. It got worse because it can't hit as many home runs. Glaber Torres was emasculated on opening day. He's going to be a shell of himself. Can't play shortstop. He's not good enough to well, start at second. True. He's still sure, not, not good enough. Not to start at, he's not good enough to start at second base. The Yankees are doomed. And here they are. They're balling. You got Giancarlo Stanton out in right field acting like he's Ken and He's Griffey Dave Winfield Jr. from back exactly. in the day. It's like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. The Yankees are playing unbelievable baseball. It's why early in the season, I guess really – because of the pandemic, because of the, I mean, the, yeah, the lockout, um, you look at this team and you didn't have a clue of how they would mesh and come together. Now we're kind of seeing it, and it's early for them to be doing this. It, it, it's early, but I don't think that it's too early to maybe draw some some <clears throat> early, to be mm-hmm. redundant, mm-hmm. conclusions on what they tried to address and whether or not they were successful. And what I mean by that is, Yeah, it's only a month or so, but the Yankees had a couple of deficiencies coming into the season that they absolutely had to fix. Otherwise, yeah, you'd win games. Yeah, you'd bludgeon bad teams, but boom, you'd be bounced quickly because it's not built for the playoffs. And those things they had to fix were improving contact rate while maintaining power, which is not easy, Mm -hmm. but they're seemingly navigating now. And they had to become more athletic, all right? And you're right. We were all crushing Cashman. I was kind of leading the charge. Let me give you some numbers. And again, it's only a month here, but the Yankees last year were sixth in strikeouts. Sixth most, right? This year, they're 15th. Nice, nice improvement. Last year, I know batting average is antiquated. Last year, they were 23rd. This year, they're fifth. Mm. Last year, they were 19th in stolen bases. This year, they're fifth. Yeah. All while still hitting home runs, they're first. Now, you were out yesterday, and the thing that I said, because obviously Mets playing the Braves, Yankees playing Toronto, I think we both think that these are the four teams or the two teams specific to our teams that will be in the way of, of divisional championships, right? So my my greatest takeaway going into the series yesterday was that while you'd love to see the Mets stay hot and win another series, seven straight out of the shoot, that would make it eight, franchise record, blah, blah, blah. I thought, and I obviously still do, that the Yankees-Blue Jays series was more important because I don't think that the Mets will change their style. Mm -hmm. They don't have a ton of masters outside of Alonzo. They're fast. They're athletic. They have great starting pitching. They're well-managed. By the way, baseball screwed Buck. Can you let the guy know a little earlier that he's not managing? Yeah, you're right. And what the hell was that? That that was dirty. And I I don't even think it was justified, first of all. That's true. Right? But it is, I mean, yeah. Yeah, just as an aside, and we'll do Mets a little more later. But even if it was... Fully justified. Let the guy know a little bit earlier. Anyway, the Mets are, I think the Mets' DNA is, is and was very easy to see from, really from opening day. That's right. Guys in motion, guess speed, athleticism, et cetera. Good bench depth, right? A lot of options for Buck, and we trust that he'll navigate that smartly. The Yankees, we like last year, well, they went 12 straight at one point before they lost seven or eight in a row. They have always, even in disappointing years, shown a pension to destroy average to bad teams. And they were going to do this year. They were going to do that this year, no matter what. But this series with Toronto last night was the kind of game that you sit back and say, oh, okay, "Okay, all right, hold on a sec." Now we know the bullpen's terrific. There's no doubt. Even though the roles have changed, yes. Lawizaga, yep. but the bullpen's locked down. This we know. They'll hit home runs. We know this. But now all of a sudden. You go in the opposite way. You take in the extra base. You win in the tight game. You play in defense. They look different this year. Take. No, well, they they feel different, and it's all it's early. Look, this is it's and again, it's early in this series as well. The second series with Toronto that they've had this season, but it's early in the series. Jordan Montgomery gave you you know a, a great outing. Only gave up two runs, and I think more importantly, what we started to see, and we saw this on a on the. Um, uh, on the bat with Josh Donaldson, where it was full shift, everybody's left of shorts, uh, left of second base, and he goes the other way. And you know, it's interesting because they said it on TV, and as I was watching it, I kind of thought the same thing that the yes. commentators were saying. Oh man, he just did that. He did that. Uh, that was on accident. He yeah. got jammed, and uh-huh. he just kind of because he didn't hit it that hard. No, he just kind of pushed it the other uh-huh. way. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, and then and then he said, "Well, maybe he did that on purpose." And they relooked at it. He absolutely did that on purpose. And so if the if the Yankees are starting to be um, 
intelligent on how they're going to take at bats against good teams and manufacture, um, you know, base hits. Then what? The, I mean, these these guys can be amazing. Mm-hmm. And I and, and and I mentioned Glaber Torres at the top BT on purpose because I had no idea where he was going. Uh, start of the season, we were at the Hard Rock Cafe. He's not in the opening lineup. And the first thing I'm thinking as an athlete, a competitive young athlete, thinking of myself in this situation, all of a sudden I don't get the start. And it's like, dude, what, how do I respond to this? And there's one of two ways to respond to it. You get depressed, you get pissed, you start chirping on social media or even traditional media, mm-hmm. or you just hunker in and mm-hmm. you go do what you, they ask you to do, right? I need, Put the work in when nobody, and don't it, tell everybody that you work. That's exactly right. And now you watch Glaber Torres last night. He has the home run opposite field. He has the RBI that drives in LeCastro. And it's like, dude, Glaber Torres accounted for all the runs. Mm-hmm. So the fact also that, played some nice, turned some nice double plays too. But the fact that he got chopped down and the 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 energy around him coming into the season was just. At an at a low, it was at its nadir. People were like, "Get rid of him. Let's trade him. Let's go get another starting pitcher." I was one of those. I wasn't sure exactly. if I wanted to keep him. For Maybe Gla- go get one of the ace pitchers. For, I was saying for Glaber Torres, <laughs> and like here he is. Finding this role, maybe he's sub, maybe he's situational, but whatever. He finds his role and he excel excels at it. If you have a guy that can do that, because I was kind of put in that situation. I tell you this story all the time. Where Coach Fossil was like, "Teak, uh, you're not going to be the starter, but be the best third down back, be the best uh, you know punt returner. Go crush that, and then we'll go from there." Glaber Torres has re uh, harnessed. This energy that was that he started his career with, but it's not as the starter. It's as a it's as a as a clutch player for this Yankees team. He might be my favorite uh, story so far because we were counting him out, and now here he is. He's coming up clutch every single time he's at bat. It he, seems he, like. And the average is not there yet, but the clutch situations, and more importantly here, the approach. And that's yeah. something I tweeted last night. And you know, of course, you get hit back. Well, what do you think you were hitting, Coach? It's funny though. It's pretty basic. If you play at any level, you got to keep the front shoulder in. Yeah. And to me, <clears throat> I really I viewed Gleyber Torres outside of Julius Randle, uh, who was who was really lazy this year, and Kyrie with you know some some maddening things off the court. Nothing bad, but just you know, we know yeah. Kyrie's story. And I'm not even talking about the vaccine. Other stuff. To me. He really, Gleyber Torres has been the most frustrating New York athlete for me last couple of years because there's not that many guys that that teeter from superstar to trade bait. Mm. And it wasn't like it was a, like the Yankee Kevin Moss. Yankees have had a couple of blips on the, as have the Mets, a couple of blips on the radar where, oh, wow, man, okay. Uh, this guy, Aaron Small, what was he, 11-0, whatever he was years ago. <laughs> like there, but you just know that it's not it's not real necessarily. Yeah, no, even though Moss kind of felt a little more real than Small for sure. But you... Greg you, Bird. Greg Bird, good call. Greg Bird for sure. You know there's an expiration date at some point with some of these guys. Even, yeah. you know, maybe like a Butch Husky. I don't know. I'm just throwing names out from the past, you know. And and I looked at Torres at, 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 uh, at Galeber. I'm like, that's... He doesn't fit that, that bill. He's... He's young. He's ascending. He's explosive. He seems to have a really good knowledge of the strike zone. He uses the whole field. So why I don't get frustrated over people I don't expect much from. I just don't. Yeah. Like, if you're a really good friend, I expect you to be there for yeah. me when I need you. If That's you're right. not, then I'm not going to call you, so I won't be disappointed you're right. if you don't pick up the phone or respond to a text. I expected Gleyber Torres to be a star when he put that full season on display, and now he's getting back to what got him there. Well, I think, approach. I think more importantly, you know, just to use all those examples that you were talking about, he didn't turn into Julius Randle, right? He didn't turn into a malcontent and sulk. And Even Lindor last year. Ex- Lindor, exactly. He didn't turn into that guy. So that's a testament, I guess, honestly, to, to the to the clubhouse. And Aaron Boone, yep, right. Aaron Boone, who gets you know, whatever your opinion is, it is what it is of Aaron Boone. You either love him, you hate him. Type I think of thing. more people have energy negatively toward Cashman than Boone. Yeah, I, I know. Coming into I know, the but, season, but I, no, I'm not uh, saying they love Boone. I'm not. I mean, I'm, I like Boone. A lot of Yankee fans didn't I, want him back. I did too, but you get this this not like apathy, but that because that's too that's too dismissive. But mm-hmm. just like, well, they don't know what he does. That's right. It's like he's not right for the job type of thing with Aaron Boone. But when you see stories like. Glaber, and I only say this from experience because the reason that I pushed through it as a player was because of, of Jim Fossil. I think the reason that Glaber helped push through this was one, he's got a good clubhouse and good guys around him. But more importantly, Aaron Boone is—he is, just defines. Like when you define what your role is, it is so e- so much easier to execute it as opposed to 
I just got to figure this out. You know, that, you know, I'm here. You know, I can. I guess. I guess I'm in the lineup today. Well, Buck's got to do that too. I 100. You know, Dom Smith. 100. Well, Canada, it's, it's a little bit I mean, easier little now little with, uh, with, uh, without with, with Robbins Gano DFA. So what do you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what but do you know? I, but You're I, gone. I, I love the the path, the story that could become Glaber Torres, and the story that could become the Yankees. Yes, who were left for dead. And the Yankees were basically thought to be a corpse coming into the season. <laughs> That's right. Really. 877-337-6666. So Yankee tickets at 1220. We'll give those away. Great, great, great seats. They're on the field. I've sat there a few times with my family. You guys will love them. Uh, 1240 guy thing, not a guy thing. 1 p.m. Jets GM Joe Douglas. Uh, listen, uh, I'm going to... I think this is I no, I'm gonna I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna say this. I think one of the most important things for a show is when you have these main principles in this area to really do a top notch interview. And I promise you, you're getting that today with with us and Joe. You're not getting fluff. You're not getting stuff you already know. You're getting the perfect interview. It's gonna be good. Now, um, the other thing too is about Torres, to, and then we'll get to these phones. I, 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 I'm going to challenge you on this. I don't want to hear this mix and match stuff. I, I want Glaber Torres now to play 11 of the next 12 games. Mm. If if he has been working this fervently as you as, as I know he has, because yeah. you don't completely overhaul your mechanics. That's right. In with, with hitting off a tee for one day. That's right. Going the other way. Everything. Oh my God! This guy's been locked in the lab, and I need to see him get. 40 at bats without interruption. You want to sit, you know, a tough right, fine. But the next 10 games, you got to play eight or nine. He's got to have a healthy chunk of at bats. And I would imagine that Boone and the Yankee numbers crunchers don't give you this stupid data. I know it applies <laughs> sometimes, but sometimes you got to use your eyes. And, and this will bother me. Like if the Yankees sit him, right, because it's something that a computer spits out, then they are being held hostage by something that can really destroy a baseball team. Use your eyes. Look at the kid play. He deserves to get run out there, and let's see if he's going to be, you know, Glaber from a couple of years ago. Because if he is, look at this offense then. That's right. I mean, if he's that guy again? Agreed. Wow. All right. Let's see what you guys have to say. What is that, Dove? You know, I got you there, buddy. Uh, let's get Jeremy and Elizabeth on the fan, Tiki and Tierney. Jeremy, how you doing today? Tiki, boys, Tierney, how are we? What's up? Good, man. Listen, I want to talk, in, in specifics to Glaber Torres, uh, I stayed up last night, watched the post-game interview, watched Booney talk, and if you listen to what Glaber said, right, that, that at-bat in the eighth, he specifically said, I watched the at-bat that Simber threw to Hixie, and I watched how he threw to DJ. By the time I got up there, I knew that first pitch curveball was coming, and I knew exactly what I had to do with it. So his mindset his, his growth as a player has completely took a, a 360 turn from last year to this year. He's not complacent anymore. He knows that he has to work, and that's exactly what he's doing. And there's the approach, the mindset, it's all there for him. It's all going to click. And he's growing up as a Yankee player. I think he's going to be something special for us uh, to come. Yeah, that's a good point uh, because he talked about that post. He talked about, I got to listen to Jerry, a little feedback there. But T, yeah. he, he touched on that post game. And you know, you don't. We don't hear too much from Glaber Torres. He's, he's a man of few words, but for him, he was he was quite expansive. Actually, yeah. talking about well, his approach post game, which I is think, good. I think that helps a lot. Like when there's not that there's doubt about Glaber Torres, but when there is a little bit of all right, there's a little question mark there. It's not a big one, so there's a little question mark there with Glaber Torres. When you get a guy who um, has a day like he has a good day, three three of the uh, all three of the RBIs uh, in their in their victory over the Blue Jays um, on the road. By the way, you know. When he can articulate it, it tells you that there's a mastery of it. It's not like, yeah, you know, I just got a lucky pitch. Yeah, I just yes. kinda, yeah, I just went out there and did what I was supposed to do. But yeah. when you can when you can articulate the process that you go through mm -hmm. and 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 make it make sense to somebody who's listening and maybe maybe doesn't know what you're talking about, that's when you know he's dialed in, right? That that's why I'm 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 excited about where he could be, like his story, because you can tell it means something to him. He's not just going to play the game and trusting. He's 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 actively, you know, correcting whatever it is that that has been wrong with him, and it's making a difference. And we're seeing it right in front of our eyes. So I I agree with you. You know, the fact that he can talk about it, he can articulate it, 
makes me really interested in where he can go. 877-337-6666. Tiki and Tierney Show inside the Town Fair Tire Studio. Our friends at Town Fair remind you that at Town Fair, you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Uh, again, Yankee tickets 1220. We've got Jets general manager Joe Douglas at 1 at a 1240. Little guy thing, not a guy thing. Hoff, good questions today? Some good stuff? When do I not have good questions? Yeah, he always Every does. week, actually. Now, BT, here's the, here's the question, though, <laughs> you know, about Glaber. Let's say he just keeps having, he just, he keeps evolving okay. into, into who we think he should be. Well, then they've got a superstar because and, that's what he was okay. before he completely disintegrated. Is he still on the trade block? No. Not at all? No. Hmm. All right. No way. No. I never that that's when I said before outside of Randall and Kyrie Irving for different things that he's been the most frustrated New York athlete for me the last couple of years. Again, the frustration's rooted in expectation, and like there's expectation. I'll give you a good example. There's expectation that Zach Wilson will take a big step forward this year. Yes, but we need to see it, of course. But there's also well, there was less expectation for Torres because I wasn't sure that he was ever going to get it. But at least there's a lengthy body of work, a full season. A oh, ball a little different. Camden Yard dimensions a little different. I know. But there's 155 games on film where this guy was an early 20s young ascending star mm-hmm. of the game. Yeah. And Yankees don't have too many of those over the years. If you think about all their title teams, you know, O'Neal comes over from the Reds. Bernie was young, but Bernie was a slow, you know, he wasn't a superstar right away. Obviously, Derek. You know, but Tino came over. Brocious came over. Nobby came over. Uh, Jorge wasn't the, the catcher of the first two championships. I mean, he's in the litany of other names, but he's he was 21. And he was awesome. 22, yeah. he was great. Yeah. So it's exciting. It is exciting. And kind of like Judge, homegrown. Oh, <laughs> right. He's hacking some zeros onto that contract. <laughs> I mean, I, we got to get into that later because what if we, what does he have? Eight home runs now? Eight, eight and 16. Okay. What if the end of May, and we'll do this at some point today, what if by the end of May he doubles that and he's got 16, 16 bombs? And 40 ribbies, and his OPS is 930. That's cha-ching, right. cha-ching, cha-ching, I cha-ching, mean, cha-ching, cha-ching. Exactly. His but, OPS but will the Yankees is, go up on that? His OPS is over 1,000. No, oh, gee. <laughs> all right. That boy, oh, get your ass up. 877-337-6666. <laughs> 